And so what I'm sharing with you now is not the way I went through it, but it's just the understanding and the idea. Sometimes, like with my kids, you know, they don't have to go the way I did. Just take the knowledge of what I have, and you don't have to go through all the stuff I had to go through to get there, okay? And so I'm telling you, there is a place of relationship. There is a place of, of communion with God. And it isn't about the, 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 the songs. It isn't about anything. It's simply about being of who you are in and who is in you. We just dwell. God is in me and I am in God. And that's it. When you recognize who you are abiding in. Okay? Like scripture talks about abiding in. You're there. And, and that's where the healing comes in. That's where the answered prayers come in. It's just when you're there. And it's nothing spooky. It's nothing crazy. It's just that's it. And I don't know where you guys are. Okay? All I'm telling you is most what you will see is. When Jesus talks about, see, we look at this Bible sometimes, and, and we look at all the things, all the rules, all the regulations, all the suggestions, and all that stuff, and we think, you know, well, this is the things that I need to be. No. It, when you are abiding in, when you are dwelling in, when God is in you, when you are in God and you are enjoying that relationship, when you read the scriptures and all these things, you say, oh, that's why I'm like that. You can't make yourself like those things. That's the biggest frustration in the world for us to be read the Bible. And how many times we beat up other people. We've been beat up. Oh, you're not doing this. You're not doing that. You know, all that kind of stuff. But the reality is when you finally, when you get to that place, that's where that place of rest comes. That's where that place of peace comes. Because those are the natural attributes. When Jesus talks to those guys, you know, well, who's my neighbor? When Jesus said, love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself, well, who's my neighbor? They couldn't get it. Most of the stuff Jesus was saying was he knew they couldn't get it. Because you just can't get it. You have to be that. And what I'm suggesting is it's walking in this worship place, this relationship with God. And it's just there. Now, you don't want to have to go through what I went through for six months. <laughs> but all you have to do is just realize. See, see what, I, what I talked about here and what I talk to my kids, especially Karis, all the time, is, is to pray strategic prayers. Okay? Like, like if, if God wants me to love that person, then God put the love in me for that person. If God wants me to love that whole race of people, God put a love in me to love that race. So whatever it is I'm supposed to be, God, I know I'm supposed to have a relationship with you. Bring me in this thing. And, and my position is unique. My position is when I did have that I was never not seeking God. I wasn't in front of a preacher. I wasn't at church. I wasn't even looking for God. I was just reading that Bible for a joke. And it was like 40 seconds into it, it was like God was real. So, so I wasn't even looking for God. I, so they can say, well, you know, unless you repent. You know, I wasn't even going there. God came and found me. That woman at the well that had that dialogue with Jesus, Jesus says, I must go to Samaria. Okay? We know the story, right? That woman at the well. Now, this, the deal is a good Jew would never go through Samaria because he would be defiled because Samaritans were that messed up. Uh, if they were on foot, a Jew would walk around Samaria, the country of Samaria, to get to their destination because they were not going to defile themselves by going through Samaria. Jesus says, I must go to Samaria. And when he went there, he sat by this well and started talking to this lady. Disciples were gone. They came back. They wondered why he was talking to her. She was even wondering why he was talking to her because a good Jew wouldn't even speak to a Samaritan, let alone a woman like that. And that was that old dialogue. Jesus went to her. And so, so what I'm suggesting is this whole thing, you know, when Jesus came to us and the word was with God and wrapped himself in flesh and came and dwelt among us, Jesus is always coming to us to, to demonstrate, to, to draw us, to bring us into relationship, into worship with God. That's what I'm talking about, worship. That's my body. Okay, let's, let's go with the conclusion. Okay. Are you all getting this? Because we're out there as humanity, as Christians, as church people, as religious folks. We're not there. There's too much fighting. There's too much bickering. When, when, when you are there, you will love. You will love Mexicans. You'll love Syrians. You'll love Russians. You'll love Guatemalans. You'll love, you'll love Haitians. You'll love who else is trying to come over here? You'll love Muslims. You'll love people who are having abortions. You'll love gay folks. You'll love, you'll love whatever, whatever the church finds vile. Because what was the thing with Jesus all the time? Jesus, how could you be sitting with that sinner? Jesus, if you knew what man or woman that was, you wouldn't be letting her do that to you right now. They were always tripping because Jesus was relating to all the people the church had determined were defiling. And, and a lot of the, the lack of love that's emanating from our lives is proof positive that, that we're not in that place, in that relationship with God, in that worship with Okay, when we can take a church again, yeah, and church people, I saw them on the internet today, you know, all mad at illegal Mexicans. Now, there are, you know, Jesus, for God so loved the world. 
So, so I understand a nation being that way, but if you're in relationship with God, if you're, you, you love people, and you, can, and you would want the best, there's no boundaries in that. We're not of this kingdom. So, I mean, there's so, there's so much evidence that the church today is not making it. And I don't see any difference between the church and the mosque and the synagogue. Allah, Yahweh, you know, God all wanted the same, and we just created our various religions. But any of them, if, I said this some time ago, and I believe this, that, that if, the, if the synagogues and the churches and the mosques would close their holy books, would close their Talmuds, would close their Bibles, would close their Korans for a month and simply pray to God, we would be unified. You could pray to Allah, you could pray to Yahweh, I'll pray to God. We would be unified because the same Father It's the religions that have screwed us up, that has taken us out of the relationship with God, which has left us in the place we're in. And we are empty. We are empty, we're not happy, we don't have peace, we don't have joy, we're not satisfied. And we just think, oh, well, this is just the life of a Christian. It's not that way. It's supposed to be a peace beyond understanding. It's supposed to be a joy unspeakable. I don't know if that might just be a song. But it's, <laughs> yeah, okay, good, good. It's supposed to be all that, but it's not for most of us. That's, that's what he said. It starts off saying the year King Uzziah died, I had this vision. Isaiah was up there, and, and God, he was in this temple, and God filled the temple, okay? Oh, man, i got to say this, though, before we go. God filled the temple, okay, with his presence. Isaiah 6, just look it up when you go home. And, and, and the angels, the seraphims, the angels were flying around, and all that was beautiful, and it was holy, and they were all the angels saying, holy, holy, holy. They were all worshiping God, you know, in the presence of Isaiah. And then the voice of God came out and said, you know, that, that who will I send? You know, he wanted to send somebody. Who will I send? And, and Isaiah said, well, send me. Isaiah volunteered. So he was in a place of relationship with God, and then he began to get the heart of God, the desire of God. God's heart and desire was for the people that were lost and forlorn and destitute. Now think about this. The people were, were already part of the, of, the, of the, you know, we're talking about, when you're talking about the, when you're, when you're reading the scripture right now, you're talking about Israel. They're talking to Israel. Israel already believed in God. So all these issues that they were having, it was like today, the church already believed in God. They were just jacked up. But, but, the, but the voice said, you know, who will I send? And Isaiah said, send me, Lord. Here I am. Send me. Right? Because he was touched. Think about that. In the presence of God, in relationship, in that worship place, in that place to go so easy. And he said, send me. And then he began to think about it. I can't go, God. He said, I can't go because I'm a man of unclean lips. He says, I'm not worthy, you know. So, so he began to get the heart of God, the desire for the people, but he didn't feel he was worthy enough because he knew what kind of person he was. And the scripture says there was an angel that took some tongs and took a coal off of the altar and touched it to his lips and purged him from all the sin, the wickedness that he was about and says, now you can go. He said, you can go, but they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to hear you. And then, then Isaiah's heart became very sad. But, but then the comfort came, and this is what we'll close with, the comfort came. He said, you know, but the people, they'll be all right. The people, it's like a teal tree, like in the wintertime. There's a, an oak tree that has lost all its leaves. It looks like it's dead, but they're not dead, okay? He said within them is that sap, is that sap of life, and that life will come back. It will come back one day. The life will come back to that tree. And this is the encouragement to us right now as individuals and as the church and as, as America and the world is that it looks dead right now. It truly does, okay? But God sent Jesus. God's desire, the scripture says his word will never return void, right? Mm -hmm. Now we say, well, what's the word? That must be the Bible. I don't see that. But what we do see here is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. That was the word will not return void. It came for a purpose, that purpose we realize. That teal tree that looks dead, the leaves have fallen, it's not dead, okay? But there has to be some. There has to be some that see this, begin to get in that relationship and say, send me, Lord, okay? Send me, Lord. And God will send us. God will send us.